All right, so this is the very first lab in the Breaching Azure lab. And in this case, we're tasked with finding the URL of uh, a web app related, related to device registration services. So in this case, we're actually going to be using a tool called Microburst. And Microburst in essentially includes functions and scripts that support Azure dis services discovery, weak configuration auditing, and post exploitation actions such as credential dumping. But in this case, we're just going to be doing some basic subdomain enumeration. So for us to do that, let's go ahead and import the module. So import module. And this tool is stored in our desktop tools. And we have a file here that contains a, a ton of tools that we're going to be using in this lab. But the one we're currently uh, concerned with is Microburst. And we're going to go ahead and import that module. It takes a little bit of time for the module to import, um, but after this module is imported, we're going to go ahead and run and enumerate Azure domains uh, command. And then we're going to be able to see what subdomains we're, we have access to for this Azure tenant. All right, so the module did take a little bit of time to import, but now that we have it in here, we're ready to start our subdomain enumeration. So in order for us to do our subdomain enumeration, we're going to go ahead and run this command. It's going to be invoke enumerate so Azure sub and we can just tap that and then base we're going to specify the specific Azure tenant that we're dealing with here and in this case it's a very first Azure tenant which is called solo drops and then we're going to do a verbose and run that command so right now it's currently enumerating uh, the solar drops subdomain and in a moment we're going to be able to see what subdomains are associated with this Azure tenant and we can already see we have some results here uh, we have uh, SCM the Azure websites we have sub uh, solar drop user files uh, Azure websites we have mail so we have Outlook what else do we have here we have Q Q core Windows net we have blob blob core Windows net file core Windows net so we see a bunch of storage services here right uh, table blob file queue we see the mail service user files so there's a ton of things here that we have access to and if we know what we have access to then we can start moving around to see what vulnerabilities we can actually exploit and gain more access or privileged access or even laterally move from one tenant to another which is another uh, lab example of what you're going to be doing in uh, the breach in Azure labs all right so the enumeration took a little bit of time but afterwards we we're able to see that we have access to all of these subdomains and what service these subdomains are related to so this is for app service this is for management this is for email this is for a microsoft hosted domain this is for sharepoint this is for storage accounts blobs files queues and tables now, this is just the first part of the lab, and this is the beginning of everything else we're going to be doing for the rest of the lab. And everything you could possibly think of in terms of vulnerabilities that or misconfigurations that you can exploit in Azure, uh, from like a device code phishing attack to extracting secret from key vaults, uh, password spraying, uh, just discovering credentials in the most unlikely places. Uh, vault enumeration, all sorts of enumeration, and a ton of other things. Another great thing is this uh, lab virtual machine is very stable. So, for example, if you were to leave um, and come back, like, you know, at another time, like, it's persistent. So, all of your information is persistent. Uh, it doesn't reset for, I believe, the entire 30, 30 days that you have access to it. So, if, for example, right, let me copy this. If I were to just close this tab, right? And I were to just open it again. Let's see, it's gonna connect and it's gonna bring us back to right exactly where we stopped. Nothing changes. So let's say I left and, you know, had to go to sleep or, you know, was busy for like two days. If I were to come back, it's gonna be exactly the same way I left it. So I don't have to worry about my work uh, not saving or you know having to restart stuff so that's a really great thing about the labs they're 
uh, the lab, the the environment is persistent, so you can always be sure that you can come back and it would just be as you left it, regardless of wherever you stopped in the labs. So that's it for the lab environment.